Why did the patients not respond well to the intraarticular steroid injection, or worse? How can I interpret structural alterations and correlate them with the pain responses? This pathologies are the leading cause of intractable intraarticular steroid injections. It is the first one, the accelerated knee osteoarthritis. The second one, the massive bone marrow lesion or edema in the painful bones. Painful knee osteoarthritis is one of the most common musculoskeletal diseases. Among the non-surgical management of osteoarthritis, intraarticular steroid injections are commonly performed in many clinics to relieve acute pain. But the intraarticular steroid injection has been criticized by many researchers for its possibility for cartilage loss and long-term detrimental effect. Its issue has been a big headache for pain interventionists. It causes many doctors to be reluctant to use intraarticular steroids. So, we should make a careful decision making of intraarticular steroids. Even if it cannot change the medium to long term prognosis to justify the usage of steroids, it should reduce significant relief of severe pain for at least a short term period. But things are not always turn out as you expected. Sometimes the patients would experience worsening pain after the procedures. Let me show one example. The patient has experienced severe knee pain for two months. Simple x-ray shows merely grade 2 degenerative osteoarthritis. But unfortunately, the conservative oral medication did not relieve the pain. The ultrasound scan showed grade 3 bulging out of medial meniscus out of 4 grades in my grading scale. I'll show you my grading system in the future. I could tell that the patients would experience worsening pain with their simple intraarticular steroid injection judged by the MRI features. Why did the patients not respond well to the intraarticular steroid injection or worse? How can I interpret structural alterations and correlate them with the pain responses? I have stored clinical data and correlated it with knee pain for many years. The pain response of injection treatment was one of my observation studies. I think the MRI answered the questions well. I want to discuss why intraarticular steroid is not always effective in chronic knee pain. I will not discuss two apparent facts. However, persons with more severe knee damage are less likely to respond to knee intraarticular injection than those with mild structural damage. Baseline knee pain, higher than nose, virus alignment, high serum hyaluronic acid, and tumor necrosis factor alpha are associated with knee osteoarthritis progression. Let me talk about my clinical observation. What kind of pathology did not respond well to the intraarticular steroid injection? It is the first one, the accelerated knee osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is generally a slowly progressive disorder. However, at least 1 in 7 people with instant knee osteoarthritis develop an abrupt progression to advanced stage radiographic disease within 12 months. It is one of the abruptly progressing cases. He has experienced right knee pain for only 3 months and received oral medication in the orthopedic clinic. The x-ray looks normal or early change of osteoarthritis. It is a coronal T2-weighted ML image 3 months after onset of pain. It already shows massive destruction of medial meniscus, diffuse hyaline cartilage defect in the medial femoral and tibial condyle, and bone marrow edema in the medial femoral and tibial condyle. 
It would help if you prepared for the possibility of accelerated osteoarthritis before the procedure. You may prefer the answer if you have tried intraarticular steroid injection without good results. If not, the patients blame steroids as a cause of rapid progression of knee osteoarthritis. The patients may bring this reference to sue you. I want to talk about accelerated osteoarthritis more. It shows rapid articular cartilage loss, larger bone marrow lesions, and effusion synovitis, more meniscal pathology than adult with typical knee osteoarthritis. In addition, increased joint symptom with a new joint trauma history with a destabilizing meniscal tear may develop accelerated knee osteoarthritis. Your patients will complain about the worst of disease in the early looking osteoarthritis. So, it would be best if you warn of possibility in advance. The second one, the massive bone marrow lesion or edema in the painful bones. Typical diffuse bone marrow lesion is intractable to intraarticular steroid injection. It is also refractory to an anterior injection when the pain is in the medial tibial region. MRI of bone marrow lesion demonstrates a region of subchondral bone with hyperintense marrow signal on T2 weighted images. In histopathology, these lesions correlate with trabecular bone's micro damage. With or without insufficient stress fracture, spontaneous osteonecrosis looks like massive bone marrow lesions. It is a case of insufficient fracture with diffuse bone marrow edema in the medial femoral condyle. You must keep in mind one thing about interpreting bone marrow lesions. Some doctors do not regard it as clinically significant lesions. If you observe subchondral focal high signal intensity like this patient, it is not a true meaning of the bone marrow lesions that I described before. It is a type of subchondral aesthetic change. This type of bone change does not affect the prognosis of steroid injection. If the patient complains about non-response or worse the symptom in the early looking osteoarthritis, you must warn the possibility of bone marrow lesions. It is the third one. The affected pathology lesion is in the extra synovial structure like the anterior cruciate ligament. The injured anterior cruciate ligament could play a pain generating role in maintaining the inflammatory environment leading to a post-traumatic osteoarthritis. Chronic anterior cruciate ligament tears are recognized risk factors for developing post-traumatic osteoarthritis. The fourth reason, it is the massive effusion. Over time, the persistence of extensive effusion synovitis is associated with the most significant risk of concurrent cartilage damage progression. Knees with meniscal pathology exhibit more serious joint diffusion than knees without meniscal damage. Thus, intraarticular damage appears to provoke synovitis, which can incite further damage. Usually, massive recurrent diffusion did not respond well to the steroid injection. These pathologies are the leading cause of intractable intraarticular steroid injections but do not disappoint too early. If we know problems, we can find a solution. There are always alternative ways. I'll share it later. Thank you for watching. See you in the following videos.